Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our Monday Live. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you all enjoying this fall weather that we're having right now. I don't know if we're going to continue, but it's very nice. <laughs> Gonna wait for some viewers to come in. Yeah, As mentioned. always, we're excited to be with you all. Today we have an amazing topic. And I'm sure you all are very excited and intrigued to hear about it. The five biggest factors to running a successful seven-figure senior care business. So we're gonna be spilling some tea today <laughs> to let you all know the biggest factors in running a seven-figure successful seven-figure senior care business. While we are waiting for viewers to come on, I'm just gonna get some housekeeping things out of the way. If you would, please, um, if you're tuning in, go ahead and share this on your platform. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you know individuals that would be um, interested in joining our senior care business, please invite them. We're looking for individuals that are in the, um, currently in the um, healthcare arena and individuals who are currently entrepreneurs who are looking to get into the senior care business and entrepreneurs who are already in the senior care business that are looking to join a community of like-minded individuals. So if you know anyone that fits that criteria, please have them join um, our senior care business community. Also, this is the week, you guys. We're coming up on our master class. It will be Thursday, uh, the 24th at 7 p.m. We will be um, talking about how to start a profitable senior care business entering the billion dollar industry. And so, as you can see today, we're gonna to be giving you five factors about entering the um, billion dollar industry. And so we're going to be um, doing our master class on Thursday, and we're going to be talking about how to start a profitable senior care business entering the billion dollar industry. And so this, you all need to save the day. You all need to go ahead and register. We have limited um, seating available. Uh, this class will blow your mind. It will also give you the um, information you need to make the decision whether or not to enter into the senior care business industry, whether this is um, the industry for you. So you discover more about um, personal care home opportunities. Um, we can, we're also um, talking about adult day health. So if you're interested in adult day or personal care home, we will be able to give you um, the keys to um, enter into and be successful in this profitable senior care industry. And so we're going to um, you'll receive step-by-step -step plans for how to start and operate your own senior care business. And so we're excited about that. So please um, join us on Thursday. I'll be dropping the link in the comments um, as well, a direct link for you all to join and register for this master class. So again, we are excited. Um, it's Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, we got rave reviews and, um, from the first class, so we're doing, a, doing the class again on this Thursday. So if you missed out on last month, we will be um, coming with this information for you on Thursday, September the 24th at 7 p.m. So you all need to go register and um, secure your seats. 
I just want to add to that. I know a lot of people, um, people that we've been consulting with already, I've been encouraging them also, even though they're consulting with us um, as a client, we have been encouraging them to go back and register for the master class. Mm -hmm. It is just a very good foundational educational um, uh, information about starting a personal care home in Georgia. I know we've been talking to some people in other states who are interested in coming to Georgia. Um, we've been talking to entrepreneurs, and this is their first time um, starting up the personal care home in Georgia. Um, and we've even got people that we've already, like I said, we've already started consulting with. But I just recommend for anyone that is this is a very good foundation, foundational information about personal care homes in Georgia that you need to know. Um, so again, we're just encouraging those who thought about it and maybe thinking about it. Um, this will definitely let you make some, some good decisions um, regarding getting, getting into the senior care business. That's right. That's right. So don't sleep on this. You all go ahead and register, secure your spot for mm -hmm. Thursday. Um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Also, um, Shonda mentioned about consulting. We are pleased to offer professional consulting services to help you start, manage, and grow your senior care business, whether it's residential, personal care home, mm -hmm. or adult day health. Uh, we, are, we are providing professional consulting services. You can contact us at consulting at InnovativeCaregiving.com, and we would gladly um, set up a consulting call uh, with you to help you enter in to this profitable senior care industry. I'll also drop that in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. Our um, email address where you can contact us. Also, I will put our calendar invite where you can go ahead and schedule yes. your um, That's consulting link, call. Direct yeah. link to us, direct link to our schedule. So I would recommend that as number one. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, again, if you are watching this um, live video or you're watching it on replay, if you would, please put it in the comments, mm -hmm. replay. Um, we would appreciate it. Also, Please share this on your page, on your platform, and also if you know individuals that would be interested in joining the senior care industry, please invite them to come a part of our senior care um, business community. And so, without further ado, we're going to talk about the five factors um, in operating um, a seven-figure successful seven-figure, um, profitable, <laughs> seven-figure um, senior care business. So, Shana, give us the factors. The first one I would have to say is planning, Jessica, and planning, 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 mm -hmm. right? Um, if you're going to start a business, if you have a business, um, you need to have a plan. You need to have a business plan. And there is a lot, and I think we've already talked about the elements of a business plan. We're not going to do that today. But today we just want to come from the space of just having, setting goals for your business mm -hmm. and working towards those goals, knowing the direction that you're wanting to take your business. Yes. Um, one of the things that we did a little different for us this year is we started with the end um, in mind to where we're going, where we wanted to go. And when I say that, we knew, we, what we did was we talked about what we wanted to accomplish in the next five years. That's what we did. We talked about what we wanted to accomplish in the next five years. We wrote it down, and then we worked our way back. Okay, right. you know, this is what we want to have. We want to help, you know, 100 people start a personal care home within the next five years. That's our goal, right? 100 people. So we started working our way back. And so, um, so for this year, our goal was to come up with 10 you know, so every year, and so it, just as an example, we went back to this year and, and then we wrote down our goals and we try to keep it realistic. Yeah. That is a problem of mine. Trust me, it's a problem. She stays on me about, um, you know, I'm, I'm a visionary. And so when sometimes when you 
see things, you, you want it all right then, and it can't all happen right then. So um, this has been very helpful to me. Um, is, you know, so we have a five-year direction of where we're going. We went back and we broke it up um, um, in different years, each year, one, two, three, four, and five, on what we want to accomplish each year. And of course, we may tweak things a little bit along the way. Um, but again, we set, we had like five, five big things, five big things that we wanted to accomplish this year. Um, one of them was starting this master class. And as you guys can see, um, our master class is going live uh, monthly now. So uh, we had five big things that we wanted to accomplish this year. And then what we did was took each quarter and each quarter we had initiatives um, that we were going to complete to help us get towards those um, those five overarching goals that we had set for our business for this year. And a lot of times, some of those things that some of those initiatives um, we were not able to do in that quarter. And what what we would do is just move it over. Either if we felt like it was something that we needed to continue, we would just either move it over, or if it, we felt like some because sometimes, like I say, you have to adjust. Sometimes it was something that we just had to remove altogether. Um, so anyway, we, we, you have to know where you want to take your business. What is your plan for your business? So that's number one, is, um, is, is having a business plan and having a strategic um, plan for your business. Jessica, would you like to add anything to that? And I, I think you said something very important um, about planning. Of course, you know, we, we make these plans and we write them out and that I want you all to know that it's okay to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, um, things come up, things happen. Um, and it's okay to adjust to put that to the next quarter, the next year, um, or even mm -hmm. um, not doing it at all. So um, it's things that come up um, that we, we plan and, you know, as we get into the year, we, we start working a plan. We say, well, no, this, that's not right. And so I want you all to know that it's okay to adjust. It's okay to mm -hmm. um, put things off um, to the next quarter, the next year, or even um, not do it at all. So you got to be willing to adjust. I think that was a good point in the planning. Yeah, we're not putting too much off, though, trust me. <laughs> But do, like she said, but things do come up. Things do come up. Um, it was something I was going to say to Jessica about the, the planning. Um, oh, goodness, it's gone now. Hopefully it'll come back to me. Anyway, planning, number one. Where are you going to take your business? The second thing I want to talk about is education, right? Mm -hmm. Education, it don't stop with high school, it don't stop with college, it keeps going, right? Mm -hmm. It's so funny, I know when we first started our business, we were so hungry, because I'm a, we're nurses, right? Mm -hmm. We're nurses by, you know, that's right. our major, mm -hmm. we're nursing. We're not, we're not business management, we don't have a master's degree, you know. Uh, we were just fresh entrepreneurs wanting to learn about business and how to successfully, how to successfully grow our business and manage our business, right? And so we were so hungry for education and I just didn't have time to go write papers. I'm sorry, I'm not dissing. Uh, education is important. Getting your degrees are important, but I, you know, at that point in my life, I just didn't have the time for mm -hmm. it. So we were looking for um, um, places of pe people or places that offer any type of training for entrepreneurs. And it's, it's very hard to come by, by the way, but they are out, they are out there. Um, the SPDC is a good um, connection. They, they have an entrepreneur training for, uh, for entrepreneurs. And again, SPDC Small Business Development Center is in Georgia. They're regionally located. There's one in every region. If you can't find yours, contact us, drop, put something in the comments and I'll connect you with the person in your region. It's free business consulting. They offer free business consulting. However, they offer a, um, what was the name of the course we took? Um, smart, Grow Smart. Grow Smart, Grow Smart. And now you did have to pay for this. It wasn't a whole lot, but you did have to pay for it. I think it was like six months long. Mm -hmm. And they had different topics where um, they taught you things about business. Let me tell y'all, 
when we went through growth smart because we knew because our business let me tell you we were growing crazy right we were growing um we were having growing pains you know it was like something's got to change we didn't know exactly what right. and after we went through growth smart it solved the majority of the problems we were having and we doubled we doubled in sales after that one of the things one of the big things that we learned out of growth smart was putting in systems yes. Right, we went through and we put in systems. We wrote our we wrote our vision and our mission statement for our company. Um, we started working on our culture. Yes. Uh, those are some of the things that came out of Grow Smart when we took it that we took away from it. And um, and like I said, we doubled in sales after that. So and I, I had already said we were growing. Right, we doubled. So education is important to your business. You want to invest in you. You want to invest in your company. And the way to do that is knowledge. Keep knowledge. Keep getting knowledge. One way to do it is reading books. Yeah. Um, every six months now, and maybe even quarterly now, quarterly. but we're, <laughs> quarterly, we're reading something new about business. And I can remember, you know, it used to be we were reading things about how to manage and how to, um, how to properly lead. Now we're le reading more things about how to scale, you know, because we're in a different place now. So, but we're always reading something um, every quarter, um, continually to get that education and, and learn how to better our business. Um, a business mentor, get one, get one, get one. We're, we're business mentors, by the way, for those who are interested in starting in, the, um, in this industry, but you need a business mentor. We've had one um, from the beginning. That we haven't always had the same one. They've changed as we, as our business has changed and grown and, and went in different spaces. We've had different mentors that we've used along the way, um, and they are priceless. Yes. I cannot stress that enough. A business mentor is priceless to your business. Someone who's already been there, who's already charted the course, who can say yay, nay, you know, or just give them, or they just giving you their opinion. You know on, on what they think um would be the best decision so i you know business mentor um yes. reading books um, looking for different leadership management management type trainings um those you know education 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 just anything you want to add on that oh yeah education is key that's you know that's a foundational um mm -hmm. that's a foundational thing that you need um, to be the leader of your business, to um, continue to grow your business, to scale your business, is important to have education. Mm -hmm. And so education is, is um, knowledge is power. Yes. And so, you know, you need that knowledge. Um, not saying that you're going to know everything, um, you know, in business, but that's where your business mentors come in place. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you go to these leadership trainings. And so um, that's why continuing education is so important. Um, you know, I think that is, um, I think this is a good uh, number two factor because maybe a lot of individuals um, think that's a myth that you have to, um, get a BA degree or, I mean, that's important, that's, that's good and well, but um, if you don't have it, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you can't be successful in business, um, being self-taught. Um, and I think um, experience, um, doing it, that's that's the, the biggest uh, teacher, yeah. you know, because you can learn textbook and then when you get in the real world, it's, it's a little different, you know, yeah. and so oh, yeah. um, being able to um, be in it and to um, to educate and to know, um, I think those are powerful too. So don't let that be a um, a drawback or a reason why um, you feel that you're not able to or you're not capable because you don't have the um, those initials behind your name or or whatever. Um, so I know we we have a lot of individuals, um, entrepreneurs that we talk to that um, never went to college. But oh my goodness, what did, what did you tell us? What did you tell me? Um, 
they have the survival skills. They, you know, um, you know, they they may not have the the uh, the book knowledge, but when it's time to survive, when, when and what is important, you got to survive in in in, um, in your business. You know, they have the survival skills. They they know how to survive, and so you know, having it having that all, you know, is is you're you're much more powerful. So. Um, doing it by experiences, experience and having education, the training, the tools, and bring, bridging those together is, is powerful. I would just add to that, Jessica. Um, one of the things we did learn when we went to Tuck, they told us that entrepreneurs actually learn differently. Mm -hmm. um, and they had actually um, had a specific training for entrepreneurs and then when you think about it, um, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, some people right. didn't even finish college. You know, they dropped out. So um, we entrepreneurs got that other type of skill, skill mm -hmm. sets that's needed to, um, to drive your business. However, there are some educational things that can help you with your business, and we want you to get exposed to that. Yes. Right? We want you to get exposed to that. That's correct. Now, Jessica, if you can help me, I want to kind of list some of the uh, leadership trainings that we've been through through the years. Um, Oh. I know. Our first one was, was Grow Smart through the SBDC. Mm -hmm. um, then we went through the Georgia Mentor Protege Program, which was through um, the Georgia Department of Economic Development. I don't, and I'm not even sure if they're still doing it, but um, if they are, if you're interested, let us know. And that's where we were able to be um, mentored by a Fortune 500 company. Um, and the connections was crazy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's when we first started thinking about or even knew there was a such thing as B2B business. Right. At that time, we only did business to consumer. And so we learned about, okay, you can do business with another business. And so that was just so eye-opening for us. Um, it's just amazing how God laid things out for us before we even need it. That's but right. anyway. <laughs> and then, you know, um, that exposure is mm. so key because things that we didn't know that um, – would help us in business um, things that um, we had no knowledge of, mm -hmm. um, like the B2B business and um, the women-owned certification yes. and yes. things of that nature um, that will help you um, gain business, more business. Um, you know, we were exposed to that. So education also brings about exposure um, to things that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't have known. That's right. So, and we only got thirty minutes today. So if y'all <laughs> hear something that we're saying that you want us to maybe come back next week and maybe um, you know go into a little bit more detail in, we can. Um, but I, the Georgia mentor and then Tuck was a biggie. Um, Tuck is at Dartmouth and they have an entrepreneurial class, um, and it's they really specifically focus on minorities, but it's open to anyone. I assume. Mm -hmm. um, and there are scholarships available, and we learned a lot at yes. Tuck. We learned a lot there. So that's just a few that I can think of right now. Um, number four, the fourth thing. Number three. Number three. I skipped number three. Oh, man, I'm trying to move us along. Number three. Number three is QA, quality assurance. Um, some people call it PI, performance improvement. However, you've got to have a QA system for your company. And basically what that means is you're self-auditing, self-checking your business, right? So you want to have some type of system in place to do that. You want to self-monitor. You don't want to wait to surveyors come in and, and check you off and, you know, you get 20-something deficiencies. And you got to go write a plan of correction. And then they got to come back and make sure that you corrected the things that, you, that they identified that was wrong. But for an example, for employee files, you already know that they're going to be checking for this, this, and this. They're going to want to make sure their, their employees have a TB test done, they have CPR and first aid, they have a fingerprint, criminal record check. Um, you know, those are a few things that they're going to be looking for. Well, you want to have a system in place where maybe quarterly, you know, if you're not having a whole lot of changes, you may want to do it every six months. But I'm, I would recommend quarterly, but you, where you're going in and you're checking your records, mm -hmm. you have a little checklist. By the way, we have these forms. And so if that's something that you need from us, let us know. 
but you do this checklist once a quarter. You take your employee file and you just check it off to see if everything is in compliance. If there's something not in compliance, you correct it right then, right? And then hopefully you put some kind of, because a lot of those things like a CPR first aid, those things renew every three years. So you may want to go ahead and put on your calendar system mm -hmm. that so-and-so-and-so uh, CPR is going to expire on this particular date. That way you can make sure that um, you can make sure the employee gets it renewed before that particular date. That's just an example, yes. one example of a QA system. But you want to self-monitor. You want to self-check. Jessica, you want to add on that? Um, no, I, I don't have anything. I think that's self-explanatory, but it is very key. Mm -hmm. It is very important um, that you put that measure in place because you don't want to, um, you know, be caught undone mm -hmm. so to say and so this keeps you on top of things it keep you informed of what is needed what what is um and what you have mm -hmm. and so you know you you don't want you want to find your own problems your own issues and identify them and correct them before someone else does and so right. this is um major um in self-monitoring and um being um, deficiency free. So what I want to add to that though is what QA means is is that you have um, again if you work with us you get these forms but you're able to right here identify this problem. So let's just say from our system check with personnel files all our res all our employees CPR first aids were expired. Well I would go to my QA plan and I would write um, mm -hmm. I found this problem CPR first aid employee files in, in the employee files were expired and then I would come up with a plan on how I would correct it and then continue to monitor it so it won't uh, happen again so when the state come in or whoever you know you know you just never know when you may have to use it but however I can say and show I identified this problem here here's the data I identified it this is what we did we did a complete 100% audit of all files we checked everyone um, everybody's up to date now, and then this is the plan that we got in place to monitor to make sure this don't happen again. Boom. That's a QA. <laughs> All right, number four. Number four is um, um, financial, uh, the financial health of your business. I, I can go on and on and on about um, knowing the financial health of your business. Know your know your numbers, right? I don't care how, how small, how big, you need to know your numbers. You can use QuickBooks. You can use uh, some type of accounting or accountant to keep up with your numbers. However, you need to know um, at the end of the month, were you profitable or were you in the red? And if you were in the red, what caused you to be in the red? Um, and so that you can, again, pivot. So you can make the necessary changes to align your business because I can assure you mm -hmm. if you continue to be in the red month after month after month eventually you won't have a business and I would just throw this little nugget in one of the things we saw this year when um, a lot of the businesses were applying for the PPP money and mm -hmm. the, um, the grants that were available for people that were uh, doing um, exposed uh, during the pandemic you know yes. the funds that were available they wanted to see financial statements and a lot of businesses, small businesses did not have them. They did not have them. So you need to have your financial statements, not just for that, but for you, for you to know how your business is doing. What is the health of your business? What's, is there anything wrong with your business so that you can go in and, uh, and correct it? You want to identify it and correct the problem. If you're not even you don't not even looking at it. You don't even know what the problem is. So, I just anything you want to add on that. And then you know about this uh, pandemic, and um, we saw a lot of also um, entrepreneurs that they didn't have the um, their financial paperwork, but also that um, the financials and just running a, having that part of your business being structured and um, not even knowing your numbers, but not even being able to take advantage of um, 
grants and um, funding that um, you could have uh, without, um, because they didn't have their financial um, statements and knowing their financials and making sure individuals were W-2 individuals and just doing things the right way, you know, so um, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, so in running a successful business, you have to do the things do things the right way and so when you do things the right way you can you can take advantage of those um, grants and those opportunities that come along mm -hmm. um, you're you're because you're running a business that is successful that is profitable um, that is in the guidelines of the government um, and you're not doing anything underhanded so again that's important in running a successful business I would say um, along with knowing your financials, is doing it the right way. That's right. That's right. All right, the last tip, because we're running out of time. We're out of time. So our last tip yeah. is going to be marketing, marketing, oh, yeah. marketing, marketing. You have to market your business, right? Clients are not just going to come to you out of the blue. You may get one of them once a year, but you have to consistently market. A lot of times the residents... The clients that we're admitting now, these are people that we probably talked to months ago, six months ago. Another thing, marketing is not always a, a, a immediate return. Just right. because you go out and market today don't mean you got clients going to be coming tomorrow. So, again, that's why you have to get out there. You have to stay out there. Be consistent. You know, one of the first things we learned when we first started was um, we had a business mentor, and they told us if McDonald's have to market, hmm. so do you. So you have to market, you have to be out there, you have to let people know about your business, right? We're not the only ones out there. You also have to know how you're different. You know, what's your value proposition? You know, mm -hmm. so you need to be able to communicate to people, have that three minute elevator speech ready to go. And you need to have a plan, again, a, a marketing plan, just like that business plan, you need a marketing plan. You know, these are the things that you wanna get done these are the people you want to connect with and make sure they know about my company. And then you may want to reconnect with some people later on down the line. We also have a masterclass series that we're getting ready to roll out that we'll be talking just about that, how to build your brand and drive sales, marketing. So look out for that. It'll be coming um, towards the end of this year. We're trying to tweak and see when we're ready to roll it out, but we are real ready to launch that, that masterclass so that we can help um, individuals know and understand about marketing because it is essential oh, yeah. it is essential to to the success of your business and i know you know most people um don't put a budget for marketing mm. but that is important it's, as ishanda said it's essential for your business so you know if you have a business and nobody knows about your business then you mm. know what good is that? So you have to market. That's right. And so you got to make allowances for marketing in your business because um, we, um, people didn't know about our business, didn't know what we did and, and uh, why, we, why we did it. And so when we went out and we marketed, we told our story, um, that's mm -hmm. how um, we start to gain clients. Um, and so, again, it's very essential, it's very important that you all put this in your budget item um, mm -hmm. to have that position or to make sure you have those marketing items um, for your business um, to be successful. That's right, that's right. All right, Ishanda, so I think we have given them the five factors mm -hmm. um, where they can have a successful, a profitable um, senior care business. And so these are things that we have done um, and we have um, tried these things. We have done it by experience. We are, um, and so we want to share these things with you um, so you can also have a successful, profitable senior care business. And so just a quick recap. Um, number one is planning, mm -hmm. number two is education, number three is quality assurance, number four is knowing your financials, and number five is marketing. And so, again, we have um, 
different master classes that we'll be rolling out. So you all stay tuned to that. And also, if you want to connect with us, um, you can um, con um, do our consulting services. And I will put that in the Dropbox, our calendar, where you can go in and schedule your one-on-one -on -one consultation call. Um, we are excited about helping individuals. As Ishanda said, our goal is to help 100 entrepreneurs enter into this senior care industry. Um, so if you know individuals, and if it's you, please uh, don't hesitate. You need to be on the master class on Thursday, mm -hmm. September the 24th, 7 p.m. Go ahead and register. I'm going to drop the link so you can register and secure your seat. Um, this is the foundational things that you need to know. Yes. Um, so please don't hesitate. Please don't um, sleep on this uh, because we're going to be giving you the tools, the knowledge, the nuggets, uh, the success plan for you to build and operate your own profitable senior That's care right. business. That's right. That's right. And so that is it for today, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoy. Please put your comments in the comments box. Please share this on your page. Yes. Please invite individuals um, that you think would be appropriate, um, that meets our criteria. Um, to join our senior care business community. Mm -hmm. And so we will be back on Monday. We're here every Monday at 12 noon. Mm -hmm. So please come and join us on Monday. We will see you all then. See you then. All right. Y'all have a great day and a blessed rest of the week.